In this video, we're going to look at eight problems and we're going to do them all using a U substitution. Now, when you use a U substitution, you're basically undoing the chain rule. So let's look at the uh, first one here. Notice in the denominator, I have 3x to the third plus 5. The derivative of the denominator gives me a 9x squared you have right there. Now, if I had a 2x squared there instead, it still works. The constant doesn't determine that. It's the variable. So if I let u equal to 3x cubed plus 5, then du will equal to 9x squared dx. This is du here. So 9x squared dx is du. Did it, this have been a 2 here? It's, it's still going to work. The main thing is you have this thing. You can replace this expression here. You can replace it by du or a multiple of du. So in this case, say this is equal to the integral of, convert this to a, an integral involving u instead of x. So the 9x squared dx, that can be replaced by du. And the 3x cubed plus 5, that's your u. And of course, you want to fit this into this formula. 1 over u du is equal to natural log of absolute u plus your constant of integration. And that's all we have here. du over u is the same thing as so 1 over u. So we can say this is equal to the natural log of absolute u. But in this problem, absolute u, or u, is 3x cubed plus 5. And it's plus your constant of integration. And of course to check it, you just take the uh, derivative of the answer here. The derivative of the natural log is whatever you have in the absolute values in the denominator. That's 3x cubed plus 5. And then using the chain rule, you take the derivative of this, put it in the numerator, we get 9x squared. The derivative of a constant is 0. That's why we say that when you use the chain rule or the uh, u substitution, you're undoing the chain rule. So this is your answer. Clear this. Now for this one here, we look at the exponent of e. You notice the derivative of 5x to the second is a 10x. That tells you that u. Let u equal to 5x squared, because then u, or du, will equal to 10x. Derivative of 5x squared is 10x, and then you have the dx. So the 10x and the dx will be replaced by du. Again, had this been a 5, it's still going to work. The main thing is that the variable part fits in there. So with this substitution, you can say this is the integral of, so this will be e to the 5x squared, but 5x squared is u, so I put the u there. And then the 10, 10x dx, this 10x dx is du. So I get the integral of e to the u du. Well, we have a formula for that. It's like the integral of e to the x dx is e to the x. The integral of e to the u du is e to the u plus a constant of integration. Once you complete the integral in terms of du and you evaluate it, just go back to the to the original variable. So instead of leaving your answer is e to the u plus c, e to the u is 5x squared plus the constant of integration. And then notice, if I take the derivative of this, the derivative of a constant is 0. So this cancels out. The derivative of an exponential, in this case e to the 5x squared, is e to the 5x squared times the derivative of the exponent. That's your chain rule. Derivative of 5x squared is your 10x. So that checks out. That's your answer. Number three. Similar problem here, except this time, this time we're in the denominator. We take the derivative of x squared plus 1, we get 2x. If this had been a 3, you go do exactly the same thing. So we let u equal to x squared plus 1. Then du is equal to, do this is 2x dx. And again, we transform the given integral into one involving the variable u instead of x. So this is equal to the integral 2x dx can be replaced by du. So I just put d 
du up here instead of 2x dx. And the denominator x squared plus 1, that is your u. Notice again, we got the same result. The integral of du over u, or 1 over u du, is ln of absolute u. But absolute u is x squared plus 1. I'm sorry, u is x squared plus 1. So I'm just going to put x squared plus 1. And if the u cannot be negative, you don't need the absolute values. You can just put, in this case, parentheses. So x squared plus 1. That's your log of x squared plus 1 plus your constant of integration. That's your answer. Now let's suppose, let's suppose this were 12. Let's make that a 12. You should do exactly the same thing. We would say u equal to x squared plus 1 and du would still be 2x dx. You could say, well, in this case, solve, solve it for x dx. Is we don't have the uh, 2x anymore, we have 12. But that's okay. You can just go do this. Say x dx is du over 2. So we replace the x. Just replace the x dx by, by du over 2. So this is going to equal to integral. So x dx is replaced by du over 2, but that 2 can divide into the 12. This will give me a 6. And I'm still going to have the u down here. x squared plus 1 is still u. This would give me then the integral of du over u is ln. So going to be ln of absolute u. At u is still x squared, and I don't need the absolute values because, again, it can't be negative. And I still have this 6 here, plus the constant of integration. And if you check your answer by taking the derivative here, you'd have derivative of ln of x, in this case, x squared plus 1. The x squared plus 1 comes to the denominator. And then you take the derivative of x squared plus 1. That's 2x, but 2x times 6 would give me 12. So it's still going to work out. Now for this one over here, the fourth one then, you have the integral of 1 over x ln x squared. I have a couple of options here. I could, I could let u equal to ln of x squared. I could bring this 2 out here using properties of logs and let u equal ln of x only. I'm just going to do this. So let's let u equal to ln of x squared, then du would equal to the x squared comes to the bottom here, denominator, and then the derivative, the derivative of the denominator goes to the numerator, that would be 2x, that would be 2x here, and we have a dx, but let's reduce this, so this is equal to, we can divide one of the x's, so this would be 2 over x, dx. So I have dx over x here. So dx over x can be replaced by du. Now here we have a 2. So let's go ahead and divide by 2 here. This 2 will go over here. So I can say then that dx over x and it's du over 2. So we'll come to this one here then. And the integral can be written as 1 over, and then the ln x squared, that's the u, so this will be u here, and the dx over x, that's the, replaced by du over 2, so I'll put the 1 half out here, Then I can integrate this again using the same formula, du over u, that's going to be 1 half comes out here, still stays there, and then this is going to be natural log of u, but u is ln of x squared in this absolute value plus the constant of integration and this is your answer one half ln of absolute value of x squared number five got a trick ex expression here and i'm going to rewrite this as sine of x over cosine of x dx so now we're dealing with some trig functions here. 
and we have a sine in the on top. So let's set u equal to cosine of x, then du is equal to derivative of that is minus sine of x dx. And we got a sine of x dx in the numerator. We don't have the negative. So we can do this. We can multiply both sides here by negative one. So that make this positive on this side. And that'll give me a minus over here. So now do the conversion here to the variable u. I can say the sine of x dx can be replaced by minus du. So I put the minus side in front. This will be du. And of course, the u is cosine of x. So this will be u. Now again, same formula. Anytime you have the integral of one over u du or du over u is natural log of absolute u. So this will be the minus is still there. And this natural log at minus, minus natural log of u, but u is cosine, at absolute cosine of x plus the constant of integration. This is your, this is your answer here. Now number six, we got x times the square root of x minus one for my integrand. So if I could let u equal to the square root of x minus one, or I could let u equal to just the x minus one, and they should both work. So this will give me then du is equal to, the root of x minus one is just one, use dx in. I always want to have the dx on this uh, du section here. And then we have to do this then. Convert this to a variable involving u. x minus one here, I got the square root, that's the u. So I'll, I'll write this as u. And instead of the square root then, go to u. I'll just write to the one half because I know I have to integrate here. And now I need something for x. So this one's a little bit different than the ones we did. But always use your substitution here. You got u is equal to x minus one. I need something for x in terms of u. We just take this right here, solve it for x. So let's go x here, take the one over. This will be u plus one. So instead of x here, I can replace that by u plus one. And of course, dx is du for this one. Now we have everything in terms of u. So we integrate with respect to u. So first we multiply through, do the algebra here, multiply by u. So this will be u times u to the one half times u is u to the three halves plus u to the one half times one is u to the one half. And this will be du. Then we just integrate with respect to u. So u to the three halves, integrate. We add one to the three halves, that gives me a five halves. Divide the coefficient one by that, that gives me two fifths. U to the one halves, integrate. Add one to the one half, I get three halves. Divide the coefficient one by three halves, I get two thirds, plus the constant of integration. Then all I have to do is replace the u by x minus one, because that's what u is. So this will give me then two thirds, place the u by x minus one to the five halves, plus, and then we have two thirds, and then we place the u by the x minus one, that's to the three half power, plus the constant of integration. So again, just to make sure you can read this at two fifths, coefficient here in the first one here, and it's x minus one, and the exponent on that is five halves. And on the next one, it's coefficient of two thirds, and then it's x minus, x minus one to the three halves. It's three halves there, plus the constant of integration. And again, just like in some of the other ones, remind you that sometimes the answer in the book will be given in different form. For example, here they could factor out, they could factor out a uh, x minus one to the three halves from this one and from this one. And from the coefficient, they could factor out a two. And then they could rewrite this with a common denominator of 15 for the five and the three. But I'm just gonna leave it this way. That's the answer for that one. Seven, what's the u? Look at the exponent here, that's equal to the root of x. So if I let u be that, let's see if that works. I think of this as x to the one half. Square root of x is the same thing as x to the one half. So that would be using the paru for derivatives here. Bring the one half over and then we subtract one from the, from the one half, gives me a minus one half. Okay, we bring this to the denominator and that'll be a two x to the one half in the denominator or the square root of x. So du 
this is a du here, du there, is 1 over 2 square root of x dx. So solving for dx, I would multiply both sides by 2 radical x, so this would be 2 radical x du. So this is equal to the integral of e to the square root of x, but square root of x is u, so this becomes u right there. And then the dx, I'm replacing it, dx, I'm replacing it by 2 square root of x du. So notice, instead of writing this up there, if I replace that dx by 2 square root of x du, the square root of x will cancel. It'll leave me a 2. I'll put that out in front, and then we'll have a du right here. Now we can integrate this one. The integral of e to the u with respect to u is e to the u. But I, gotta, I have to go back to the original variable. So instead of putting the u again here, I know that u is equal to square root of x. So this will be square root of x here. And of course, I still have this constant out in front. This will be 2 plus the constant of integration. That's your answer. You go ahead and check this. But taking the uh, derivative of the answer, you should get this integral there. And then finally for the last one, now for number 8, notice I have a 3x squared here and the derivative of 3x squared is 6x. So let's do this. 8u is equal to 3x squared. So du, derivative of that is 6x and I have to have the dx and then with that I can make a transformation to the variable u for this integral. This should equal to then the integral. Put the 6x and the dx together and that will represent du. So I'll have this then, secant, like so secant squared, and then 3x squared, that's your u. So this will be secant squared of u, and then the rest of it will just be du. And I know that the derivative of tangent is secant squared, so the integral of secant squared with respect to u will be tangent of u. I always have to go back to the original variable that u is 3x squared, so this will be tangent of 3x squared plus the constant of integration. That's your answer. Again, easy check. The derivative of a constant is zero. The derivative of tangent is, of course, secant squared and the 3x squared. And then through the chain rule, the derivative of 3x squared is the 6x. There it is. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.